All right, folks, we're going to be moving on to segment number two. I've talked a lot about this topic, and uh, we continue to talk about this topic because it's fucking important. <laughs> There's a control over education, people. They're trying to they're trying to steal a kid's minds, man. But they are trying to steal a kid's minds uh, by controlling education. That is it. Controlling education is is key in any fascist dystopia. I don't, I don't, I just don't understand how people fucking don't see that shit. When you when you start telling people what they can't teach and how and how they should teach what they're allowed to teach, uh, that's fascism. And you're and you're kind of teaching that subservience uh, and and a false reality to children. And I don't know if you've met children, uh, but uh, th you don't need to. They will do a great job creating false realities. I mean, I had a whole. Uh, I had a, when I was, this is, okay, here's a fun, weird fact about Krish. When I was a kid, I used to have uh, a schedule, like a television schedule, because in my mind, it was a TV show, you know, uh, I, 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 I was, I thought I was on the Truman Show before the Truman Show was a thing. Does that make sense? Uh, and so I would write out the schedule of like, this is, you know, this is what I'm doing between this time and what people are watching. And like the, a the action figures I would play with were like a show. So every time I had an episode, like I had seasons for things, I had this continuous storyline. Uh, and I used to, so look, I built my own fucking false reality. I didn't need school to teach me a false reality. I mean, they did, but I didn't need them to. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I mean, I don't want to brag, but my false reality was pretty cool, you guys. Spider Man was there, Batman was there. They hung out. I didn't give, I didn't, I didn't give. I, it, I was at that age where like nerd rivalries didn't matter either. So like Spider Man and Batman were solving crimes together and shit. It was dope. It was dope. Definitely, I, I feel like, like net, if they could, Netflix would buy that show. Anyway, uh, moving on. So. So here's here's what's going on in Texas, right? Uh, and this is coming amid the wave of like all of these stories of so many conservatives freaking out about critical race theory and spreading all this crazy bullshit about it. And I and I talked about it last week. I had a friend that came over and we had a really frustrating conversation over it. Um, and and I had some realizations in that conversation about this individual that you know like and, and but it was just like mm, okay. Uh, the 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 kind of utopian concept you are bringing up is true, but the methods of achieving that is nonsensical uh, and doesn't make any sense. So uh, so I think because of that, there you know I I was I was kind of waiting for this. I was like I don't know if we'll go in this direction just yet because there's so much other crazy shit going on now. Um, but they they went there. So there's a new bill in Texas. Uh, SB3, and it basically wants to eliminate making it a requirement to teach kids about the civil rights and about, uh, which includes Martin Luther King Jr., right? Which is like every fucking Republicans go to, uh, see, I believe in black people. I liked Martin Luther King, okay? I liked him. I don't believe he should have voted, but I like it. I liked it. Wait, I should, I should stop talking. Yeah, like they, this is the per, even Republicans will fucking quote Martin Luther King Jr. And they and, uh, quoted him ad nauseum last year when the Black Lives Matter protests were going on. They were like, look, Martin Luther King Jr. said that you should be peaceful. Why don't you got, why don't all the black people in the country like protest like the way that white people tell you to? This is how politicians sound in my head. Uh, when they make stupid arguments, it's just the it's a valley girl. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean that to be insulting or anything, but I see them as a uh, spoiled 16 year old girl uh, whose parents have given them everything in the world, and they still find a way to complain about stuff. That's how I view politicians that complain about protests. Uh, okay. Here's all the things that uh, the this bill doesn't want kids to learn about or make it a requirement to learn about, right? 
civil rights, uh, you know, including MLK, uh, Frederick Douglass, Dolores Huerta, uh, and uh, they also want teaching of uh, KKK slavery and Jim Crow laws um, as not morally wrong, uh, meaning they want to teach uh, racism in a positive light, uh, or as I see it, a centrist West dream, because it's always the centrist. It's always the centrist that comes out and he goes, well, I'm a centrist. So like, let's look at like why people are racist. And it's like, yes, you should learn the source of why people are racist, but learning the source of something does not justify or excuse said behavior. It gives you a source point to go, aha, let's talk about that and work through that. And maybe you won't be this anymore. You'll be a, a changed and more evolved individual. That's not what they're talking about. They're basically like, here's the reasons why racism needs to exist. Here's the reason why it's it's not really bad to judge people based on the color of their skin and then ruin their lives economically uh, and sometimes very violently. Here's the justification for slavery in America. The, the, the answer to that is fucking there isn't any. If you're a human being with even an ounce of compassion in your heart, enslaving another fucking human being wouldn't even cross your mind. It just wouldn't. Using economics to oppress another group of people because they look different than you on the surface wouldn't cross your mind if you had a drop of fucking compassion in your body. They want you to teach these topics without deference. You can't, you can't provide positive reasoning there is no positive reasons for racial hatred there just there isn't man there isn't there's no positive justifications for you know destroying a human being's life because they don't look the same as you or don't believe in the same god as you or any of that sort of stuff there's, there's no fucking positive justification for it. But Texas wants you to teach as if there is. So lie. So lie to your kids. Lie to your kids about bigotry and racism and discrimination. Lie to your kids about the, the, the history of bigotry, discrimination, and racism that fucking exists in the core of this country. How about this? How about instead instead we do this? We teach people the accurate history of America. We teach people uh, what the founding fathers did, who they were, why what they did was important to some people, why it negatively affected other people, and then let the kids make that they make the decision themselves. You give them accurate information, and you go, how do you guys feel about it on a moral and ethical level? Instead of being like, well, the plantation owner had to be the slaves because... I mean, they wanted to get paid. And what would the plantation owner do without having 38 different horses that they treated better than the slaves? What would he have to settle for 37? How dare you? What? Like what? There, There's no justification for that. <laughs> that's But that's what Texas wants you to do. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you leave it up to the kids, right? And what and, and really what you would be teaching them is critical thinking. Okay, how to how to think for themselves, how to how to be a free thinker, how to look at information and go, okay, this is how I'm arriving to this conclusion. But that's dangerous because if you if you actually teach critical thinking, if you actually teach true history, people will be able to spot propaganda so quickly. Networks like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News would lose viewership overnight. Nobody would be able to get fooled into into wars. I am being a little hyperbolic, obviously, but you understand what I'm saying. There wouldn't be this argument over Black Lives Matter being too anti-white. It's like, what? That's it's that's not even white people. It's not even about white people. So can you can you guys just like sh be an ally and sh shut the fuck up? Can you can say stuff like you can keep saying Black Lives Matter, but like don't say like, yeah, but like what? But like all lives do, too, though. Like, don't say that shit. Ain't nobody want to hear that because it ain't about you, dog. So shut the fuck up.
look, the the bottom line about this is that it's it's uh, uh, it's anti critical race theory, right? And there's been this big argument about critical race theory, what it is, why people should be against it, why it's evil. Oh my God, I can't believe you would want to teach something like this. These are children; they'll never understand it. Oh my God, but now uh, is is my kid supposed to feel bad for bad uh, about about who he is and where he comes from? Well, no, not who he is, but where he came from is kind of shitty. And maybe if he learns how shitty it is, then that kid grows up to be a better person than the previous generations and doesn't do the same kind of harm to society that the previous generations did. So perhaps we should learn accurate history. So I don't know. We don't fucking repeat it. But it is right, and and really the 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 critics of critical race theory CRT. I'll I'll just call it CRT going forward. But the critics of that um, are uh, are people that either don't understand what it actually is, right? Teaching the idea and philosophy of um, of systemic racism, how it how it exists, and so on and so forth. Uh, or they're just spreading lies and false information about it. Hi hyperbolic false information to scare people. You know, it's it's like when you're a kid and you hear a rumor. This is, uh, this is a rumor I used to hear when I was in India is there was a three-headed witch living uh, on our roof. And I, and I would freak out every time. But some of the older kids started that rumor. Not, it was never substantiated, never proven. Um, and, uh, and I believed it because people talked about it and they were so scared about it and they say, they said it convincingly to you. And, and so I believed it. This is the same thing. The, the conservatives that are believing it are like, yeah, and they, uh, they, they want to teach kids about pornography in the third grade. They're going to show boobs and dicks. It's like, yeah, well, they'll find that in two years anyway. So if that is what they're doing, then I don't know, fucking let them get a head start. You know, positive sex education taught to kids when they were, when, uh, you know, Holy shit, wouldn't that fucking change the way that we handle relationships going forward in our lives? Maybe it would end soap operas. That's what they're afraid of. If they teach if they teach positive uh, sex education, soap operas would be done. <laughs> but they also just outright spread lies about what it is. You know, all white people are... E no, historically speaking, white people have been colonizers and imperial imperialists that have come into, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Europeans mostly uh, have, have come into different country, different nations, the Americas, North and South, Canada, fucking Africa, India, and they bring their armies and colonize these people. They exploit them and use them for labor and they take all the profits and they give it to the oligarchy. Uh, what is, I mean, that's... It's super fucking funny to me how sensitive these guys get about the actual history of the people that they consider heroes. Uh, and these are the same people that are like, don't be such a snowflake. So what? We use stereotypes and jokes. That's what makes it funny. Don't be such a snowflake. And then it's like, okay, thanks, colonizer. You can't fucking say that, man. That's not cool, bro. Like immediately, it's the same people. It's like, oh, so it's okay for you to censor thought when you when it's a thought that you don't like when it's a piece of fact that you don't like but when you want to say all the racist shit and people go yeah we don't think that's funny and we don't think that's cool anymore these are low-hanging fruit stereotypes that aren't really true and have like held communities back uh in, in a lot of instances like and they go oh you're being sensitive but then you criticize them you know they start freaking out right oh, marxism they're gonna teach me okay Eventually, yeah, the kids are going to figure out what Marx is. But then it's like, oh, well, we're, we're not supposed to have, we're supposed to treat this deferentially, right? We're, we're not supposed to have emotions behind the things that we teach. Teach it with some neutrality, right? That's what you want. If you're going to, if you're going to teach the civil rights movement, then you also have to teach uh, the, the perspective of the KKK member. So if you're going to champion capitalism, then you also have to teach the perspective of somebody that criticizes capitalism, such as Karl Marx and pretty much everybody that has a brain. That was a little mean, I know, but you get my point. Critical race theory is a higher education course. It's not being taught.
to fucking toddlers. It's just not. Not it's, it's not to say that eight year olds can't comprehend what race is. I, I mean, I I addressed this at a huge rant last week. How is it that you find it okay for these kids to experience racism but not learn about what it is and where it comes from and how to combat it? POC kids have been dealing with racism their entire fucking lives. It's not a new concept to us. Putting a, putting a label to it helps. But if, I mean, if, but if you're going to say like, oh, well, you have to teach the capitalist. Per no, we've already been teaching the capitalist perspective. What's missing is the counter to it, the, cri the, cr the critical elements to it. That's what we need to teach. And bills like this are trying to get rid of it. Now, you know, if you saw the little little clip at the beginning of the live stream, you you, you saw me do uh, put up my one of my old videos talking about how the Texas school board really controls the education in the South. Right. Because they're the they can place like 48 million books. You know, they so they the publishing company, the textbook publishing company is at the mercy of what Texas wants. And Texas, this is from 2016, this is five years ago, they wanted to change the word slaves to workers, which is just not a thing. You know. They wanted to depict Mexicans as lazy drunks. It's like, really? Have you met a corporate CEO? <laughs> what did they do? We just watched 30 Rock. It's a, a you know very fun show. But it, it does show someone like Jack Donaghy, who is aspiring to be a corporate CEO, doing all this stuff. Really, Jack Donaghy is probably middle management, a very rich middle management person because there's always people above him. But those people, you don't really see them doing anything except throwing lavish parties and all that. Why do they get billions for doing virtually nothing? How is that a system that makes sense? That is something that's never made sense to me. All of a sudden, you move up and become the boss. You come to one meeting a week, but you clear out a billion dollars. But the person doing 40 hours of work or more, that person takes home maybe $10,000 before taxes. They, they wanted to teach... So again, they wanted to teach... Slaves are workers, and all Mexicans are lazy and drunk and, and live for tomorrow is what they said. So it's, so it's racism. You're teaching racist propaganda in school. You're teaching low-hanging fruit st fucking stereotypes. You're making Jeff Donham fans, you fucks. Not only that, but, but making these certain specific topics no longer a requirement, right? And, and Texas has the ability to do this. Texas, Texas will make changes and the publishers have to go along with it because the publishers know that Texas will buy a large amount of it. And then states that can't afford to buy even the minimum quantity, Texas will fucking hand it out. That's why Texas does that. So they control what goes into the books. So if, if MLK, Frederick Douglass, Dolores Fuerte, Susan B. Anthony, uh, you know, uh, Mother Jones, a, any of these people are no longer a part of that textbook. And you're teaching things like, yeah, the KKK existed. And, um, and you know, they did some things. Some people thought it was bad. Other people really liked it, though. Uh, and then uh, and then they were kind of chill for a bit. They were like, send some of us. Uh, and then, oh, my God, racism came back in like in the 60s. And it's like, where did this fucking shit come from? It's like, it's always been there. But not making that a requirement means that if, if teachers want to teach it, like if a teacher wants to teach you about MLK, wants to teach you about any of this stuff, where are they going to get the materials to do that? They're going to get the materials from their own pockets. They're going to have to fucking provide that shit on their own. So you want to buy a book, like let's say they want to buy a biography of Martin Luther King, a biography of MLK. They're going to have to buy 30 copies of that by themselves. Where are they going to get the money for that? So that's what it does. So so now it puts teachers in a financial bind. So if, so if, if you do want to enlighten your children and make them intelligent members of society and not subservient drones in an authoritative fascist prop, uh, fucking dystopia, then these teachers have to virtually go bankrupt in order to ensure that the next generation of people uh, have some fucking understanding of racism in America.
and then let's say that th these kids grow up. Like, let's say they fucking grow up in this education system, and they and they finally get to college, and they finally get out in the real world, and then they start meeting people, and they start hearing about racism, and they go, "What the fuck is going on? Oh my! I none of this stuff was taught to me. I I, I was taught that everything was fine. Martin, who is Martin Luther King Jr.? Who are you guys? This happened." I thought in the 60s, we went to the moon. We conquered the moon. The moon is America's now. I thought that's what happened in the 60s. I thought we stopped the the, the, the awful communists in, in, in Vietnam and Cuba and, and Russia and all these other places. What are you talking? What is, what is this? And they start free, and then they'll start getting exposed to it as adults, realize that their entire fucking life was a lie, and probably get radicalized in some way, shape, or form, probably violently, because that's what happens when you snap a fucking psyche, like a goddamn rubber band. And that's the, that's the that's the re that's the future that they're heading to. Is that you're going to have these pockets of hyper radicalized kids that discover that their entire fucking life is a lie and and break psychologically, or you end up with subservient drones that that will ignore the truth and just live in the comfort of their lies and not know that there's actually something better for them to achieve to. And, and this is opening the Pandora's box. And there's been this attack on education for a long time. Uh, you know, I even remember when I was in college, they were saying that, oh, education is, 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 has, a, has a liberal bent. It has a left bent. No, history, facts have that. Facts show that exploitation of people is fucking bad. What's the, where are we are? What is the argument on that? How are you going to justify exploitation? How are you going to justify slavery? I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that they piggyback on to trying to, um, you know, go after colleges and 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 write a bill that basically prevents colleges from teaching courses like this. Basically stops colleges from teaching courses that remotely involve or resemble critical race theory or Marxism or any of these things or the true history of America or any of that stuff. And that's a dangerous Pandora's box to open because that is leading us down into a fascist dystopia. I've said this before is no one the, the problem with books like 1984. It's a good book. I really enjoy the book. Um, you know, and the problem is. We never know how we arrived to that point. We just know that we have. And we know the elements that brought us to this reality. And But we're looking at the, the makings of the elements now. Controlling education by deleting any sort of, quote, controversial topic such as race in America, which is a core foundation of how this fucking country was put together is leading us down the, the fascist dystopian hellscape that we read in some of our most popular books. And if you are for this, you are incredibly ignorant. You are extremely ignorant and very privileged to have the ability to ignore the true history of this country that the rest of us poor poor white americans black america poor black americans people of color women the lgbtq plus community all have had to live through and if you are somebody that has lived through it and still side with these people that want to control your education that want to say that we can't teach history the way that history exists, so we have to rewrite it and manufacture it. If you support that idea and you've been through all of this turmoil in your life, then fucking A, do you have Stockholm Syndrome. And boy, howdy, I, I you know, run out of patience and I run out of ways to try and help you because the system is not benefiting you either. Let's look at your comments. Uh, Melanie, good to see you. 
hopefully, I will see you in Louisville when I come through in the fall. Uh, I will be putting up uh, ticket links for that soon, Melanie. I'm, I'm very. Uh, it'd be it'd be great to see you and and Rolf and everybody down and down the old Louisville. Uh, Melanie says they hang out at the franchise happy hours and talk about inf uh, their infidelities. That's what billionaires are doing instead of uh, instead of actual work, right? <laughs> They're talking about how they can shape rockets like more dongs. Uh, that's what they're talking about. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, uh, Cynical Girl points out Jesse Jett nailed it in in, in Pelo uh, Pelosi in his song Speaker of the House. Is that the one that starts with the, the Sunday morning uh, loop? That creepy fucking thing that she did. It's a, it's a good morning Sunday morning thing. I can't remember if that's the if that's the song that I'm thinking of or not. But that's that's what's going on in my head now. Uh, CG says without opposing views to compare and contract, it's just straight up indoctrination and propaganda. Exactly. Um, you know, I I think you should you should know how capitalism works. You should know what the counters to capitalism are. You should know what the arguments are. Obviously, in third grade, that's a little advanced, but you can teach people how, you know, I'm really sick of of hearing these people champion guys like Andrew Carnegie. I, I'm, I'm really sick of people championing people like John D. Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. These guys were fucking cretins. And you should say, yeah, these people made their money, and here's how they made their money. Here's how they became the titans of industry. But here's the counter to it. This is what workers were looking at. Strikes are always taught negatively. They're always talked about in this light of like, well, the workers, you know, they just wanted to, old Carnegie was trying to help them out. And these workers, boy, they were just asking for everything. Uh, oh, it's the one where she's eating ice cream. I'll have to do a revisit on that one. Uh, yeah. Judy says, read, read Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States. It's on YouTube chapter by chapter. Somebody actually gave me a link to, to one of the, one of the read throughs of it. I need to, I need to read it. Um, I read through about half that book. Uh, it's, it's, I will say this, if you are somebody that like an empath, which is a problem with me is you get mad at a lot of shit that's in there real quick. So it took me a little while to get through half that book. And, I, and, and the problem with me too is I, um, I have a really hard time uh, reading books in, in general. Um, I, I, it's just a matter of finding time and space to read. <laughs> but People's History is f phenomenal and fantastic. I've actually used information I've learned from People's History in my stand-up act. Uh, there are quotes and there are things that he writes about the Finding, F Finding Fathers that I think more people should know about. Um, yeah. Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. 
all the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.